We're Ariel. And Michelle. And, and we're, we're the, the Board, board game, game Tutors. tutors. We're going to be going over today the Swamp Mercenary Faction from the Summoner Wars Alliances set. So let's go ahead and get started. All right. Here is your starting setup card. Oh, oh the other side starting setup, sorry. Uh, mm -hmm. This one just tells you your event cards. Your vine, you have vine walls, which are separate from your deck, and the turn phase summary. And like I said, this is a starting setup card. So there is Glorblub's starting setup. There are all of his units. And that's how you set up the opening uh, round of the game. All right. This is one of your vine walls. So um, this deck has vine walls, just like the original Swamp Works deck had vine walls. These are a little more vine covered in the picture. And um, for an explanation of how you use vine walls in this deck, um, it's this. It works the same as in the Swamp Works. So if you look back at our part one video for the Swamp Works faction, um, my blog specifically, mm -hmm, um, that video explains in detail how vine walls work. All right. So the vine walls are set aside um, to the side of the board. You have 15 of them all in their own pile um, next to the board. Okay. Yeah. You can see it over there. You can ignore the other cards. They're just extras. Okay. <laughs> all right. So here is an example of a wall from the Swamp Mercenaries faction. Yeah, there's nothing special about that. Nine hit points. Just a regular old wall. Okay. And then here's Glurblub, the summoner of the Swamp Mercenaries. He has an attack value of 2 and is a ranged fighter with 6 hit points, and his special ability is called Vine Mancer So. So this is the main way that you get Vine Walls um, while using this deck. Vine Mancer So says, when Glurblub destroys an enemy unit, place a Vine Wall on the space that unit occupied. Glurblub does not have to roll to move off of a Vine Wall. So this one's important because in Muglug's deck, if you're familiar at all with how Vine Walls work with that deck, um, you would have to have a wall a vine wall or a regular wall somewhere on the field and vine walls would grow out of that wall or that vine wall yeah, when a unit was killed next to the wall but glor blubs attack um a special ability it's a, a radically different vine wall creation method uh in this case uh he has to do the dirty work basically um with muglug as long as one of his units including him his champions or his units um attack next to their wall, uh, an enemy unit, or any unit for that matter, next to a wall. He would make a vine wall there if they were successfully destroyed. Glorblub has to do it himself. Um, so he has a ranged attack of two dice. So he has a reasonable chance of killing any given unit, unless it's a really strong champion unit. And then they'd have to be weakened first. But, um, so here, you have to put him in dangerous way in order to get vine walls onto the field. So that's a different... Uh, tactic a different method of creating vine walls and it is um specifically when he destroys an enemy unit so you can't use it against your own units yeah, so, to, in order to get vine walls so yeah he can't get all bloodthirsty and kill his own units that wouldn't work okay then our first common unit is called a borboon he costs three magic to summon has an attack value of two and has three hit points and the borboon borboon's special ability is called sudden strike add one to this borboon's attack value during the turn it was summoned so pretty straightforward. When you first summon him, he has an attack value of three instead of an attack value of two. So basically he's ambushing people and he can roll three dice and that's pretty much it. Next we have the Swordsman. He's also a common of the Swamp Mercenaries. Costs one magic to summon, has an attack value of two and one hit point. And he's a melee fighter. <laughs> um, and oh, his, mm -hmm. and the Swordsman, um, his special ability is called Slippery. This swordsman may move through other units, but must end its move on an unoccupied space. This swordsman does not have to roll to move off of a vine wall. So if you watched our previous video about the Vargoth vanguards, he has a similar ability to the cherubim because he can pass through other people, but he still has, he only has two movement, not three, like the cherubim. Um, and he has to end on an unoccupied space. So he can't land on, he can't go through walls. He can't, um, Land, uh, land on another unit so yeah uh, he's limited a little bit more than the cherubim is mm -hmm. okay Sorry, one second. and then the third common unit is called a swamp rat these are zero cost so you don't need any magic to summon them they have an attack value of one and they have one hit point their special ability is called hide after attacking with this swamp rat you may place it adjacent to a wall you control that is within two spaces of this swamp rat and then place one wound marker on that wall. When this swamp rat is attacked by a friendly unit, immediately place it in your discard pile. 
So basically there are two different aspects to this special ability. Um, the first part says basically that the rat can go behind a wall that it was close to when it did an attack. So he can attack and then go anywhere adjacent to a wall, but it has to be a wall that he was already within two spaces of when he started. So it's a little limiting in this example. The wall was here. The swamp rat was here. Let's say the swamp rat attacked somebody in front of him. Then he could retreat. He could go anywhere adjacent to this wall. Mm -hmm. Yes. So he could go here. Obviously, here is the safest position. Um, and then um, there we would, put, we would put one wound marker. Yeah. So, yeah. so it does damage the wall a bit when you have this, the swamp rat hide beside it. And uh, it says a wall. So line walls are eligible. But yep. obviously, you have to be careful with that. They only have two hit points. So basically, he's killing half of its life if you put one wound on it. Right. And then the second tech, uh, second part of the text for the special ability notes that if a friendly unit attacks the swamp rat, it immediately goes to your discard pile. So you can kill this rat if you want to. You actually don't even have to roll dice. It's just as soon as you choose to use an attack on it. But then he would go to your discard pile, so you wouldn't get to use him for magic if you decided to kill him. So... Um... As opposed to the swordsman and the barboon, if you killed them with friendly fire, um, they would go to your magic. But the swamp rat, um, because uh, they just want to prevent you from getting too much easy magic, um, yeah, uh, it will go straight not to your magic pile over here. It will go straight to your discard and be used. So you don't get that back. So in general, it is never, not never, but it is almost always a bad idea to attack your own swamp rat. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, then we have our first champion for the Swamp Mercenaries. His name is Turt. He, has, he costs six magic, has an attack value of three, is a melee fighter, and has six hit points. His special ability is called Lumbering. Turt can only move up to one space per turn. When an opponent rolls to attack Turt, he only receives wound markers from die results of five or higher during that attack. So Turt is pretty thematic in terms of his special ability. He only moves one space, which makes sense because turtles are generally slow, or at least perceived as being slow. And then he's also hard to attack because he has a shell. And so you have to roll a five or a six or you or you won't have done any damage to him. So, so pretty easy to understand. And yeah, so he's pretty scary. He rolls three dice. And yeah, he also moves slowly. So um, with him, if you're, if you're trying to go after your opponent's summoner, which you obviously are in this game, uh, you probably want to place a vine wall somewhere on the enemy side of the board. There are two main ways of doing that. Glorblubs, Vine Mancer, so is the primary way of doing that. But there also is another way, primary way of doing that, and we'll get to that in a minute. And then, basically, that way Turt's on your enemy side of the battlefield. Then he doesn't have to move quite so far before he can attack. Because, like we said, he can only move one space at a time which is a kind of a big disadvantage, but if he's on the enemy side of the battlefield, he's usually not that far away from anyone who needs to get damaged. And it's hard for your opponent to kill him while he's going toward their summoner because they only um, damage him if they roll a five or a six. Right. And the next champion is named Mick the Tusk, presumably because he only has one tusk, unlike the other Swamp Orcs, which have two usually. Mm -hmm. He costs five magic. He has an attack value of two, is a melee fighter, and has six hit points, and his ability is Vine Mancer Strike. When attacking with Mick, add one to his attack value during that attack for each vine wall he is adjacent to. Mick does not have to roll to move off of a vine wall. So he's strengthened by any vine walls that are adjacent to him while he's attacking. You add one to his attack value for every wall that's beside him, so that means you add one die for every wall that's beside him. So um, I doubt this will ever happen, but... Let's say he had the maximum amount of vine walls that he could have. Then that would be one here. Purely theoretical situation. This will not happen to you with the majority of the time. Um, here and here. This is the most vine walls he could be adjacent to at any given time. Because if he was right here on top of this middle vine wall, he would be adjacent to one, two, three, four, and when you're on top of a vine wall, five. So you could add, in this really rare instance, he would roll five for all the vine walls plus two, which would be seven. 
So, for example, here um, he could be attacking a unit that was on one of the vine walls beside him. Yeah, so if there was a unit here, then he could attack that unit. Mm -hmm. Otherwise not, because he is a melee fighter and there are also walls in the way, which would not work for him. Okay. And then the third champion is Prong. He costs four magic, rolls three dice, is a melee fighter, and has three hit points. His special ability is called Vine Mancer Drain. Once per turn, when Prong would receive one or more wound markers, you may destroy a vine wall you control that is adjacent to Prong to ignore those wounds. Prong does not have to roll to move off of a vine wall. So Prong would be beside a vine wall in this situation, and he, let's say Mick the Tusk just rolled two dice against him and, and they were both successful, maybe? Let's see if they were successful. Just one. Okay. Well... So it would work either if one was successful or both were successful. He could discard that vine wall, and then he wouldn't take any damage. Mm -hmm. So that can be really frustrating for your opponent if they thought they were killing him, and then he didn't take any damage at all. Obviously, one way to counteract this would be if you attacked Prong with two people. And in this case, you probably want to attack Prong... Well, actually, it doesn't matter either way, but the, let's say if you attacked uh, him with a common first, and the common did one damage to Prong, and then if you had Mick the Tusk do one damage to Prong, uh, basically your opponent would have to choose which one they wanted to block um, using that one vine wall. And you can only do this once. Mm -hmm. If there were two vine walls next to you and two enemy units attacked you, you can't use it to block both. You can only use it to attack once. Right. Not to defend once. Yeah, this is once per turn. Now on to the event cards. This is called Swamp Dominion. Add one to Glurblub's attack value until the end of this turn for each vine wall you control, up to a maximum of five. So we've checked this up on the plaid hat forums because we weren't quite sure exactly what the wording meant, and we verified that, um, on the forums anyway, it said that, uh, so if you look here, um, center Glurblub please. Mm -hmm. Glurblub rolls two dice naturally. If you had anywhere on the board five vine walls, then you would add five to his die roll for one turn when you play Swamp Dominion. So he would have a total of seven dice. And obviously you just count how many vine walls you have at any given time. If you have three and when you play Swamp Dominion, then you would get five dice total, etc., mm -hmm. etc. Yeah, so the, the highest that he could do is to roll seven dice. Mm -hmm. And you can't do any more than that. Okay. And obviously, at that point, you probably want to borrow some dice from your enemy army, uh, enemy uh, army, but they might not want to give it to you because they don't want you to roll seven dice against them. So that's that. <laughs> All right. The next event card is called Spore Carriers. Destroy up to two units you control. Place vine walls on the spaces the destroyed units occupied. So this is the other major way that you can get vine walls while playing this deck. And there are, I believe, four copies of this card in it mm -hmm. uh, in the deck, and so. You can use this on any unit that you control. Mm -hmm. So um, let's say Prong, for example, let's say he had two wounds on him and he was on the enemy side of the field. You know he's going to die next turn. They're gunning for him because obviously he rolls three dice and rolling three dice is never a friendly prospect to an enemy army. So what do you do with Prong? You might decide using Spore Carriers to kill Prong where he is and then if you kill him using Spore Carriers, you, he is destroyed. He goes to your magic pile, which is helpful for you, because now you have one more magic point. And you place a vine wall where he was. So this is one way. Um, this is one of the main reasons why Swamp Rats are really useful. And obviously, they're only so useful, because like we said, they only have one hit point total. So um, if you get a Swamp Rat and you shove them onto the opponent's side of the board, and somehow they're not dead because your opponent rolled unsuccessfully against them. Now you can use that Swamp Rat, uh, which was a zero cost anyway, so it didn't hurt you to put it on the field in the first place. Now you can destroy it, put a vine wall where it was, and when you destroy it, it goes to your magic, which is beneficial for you overall. Um, obviously, you don't want to just go killing your champions willy-nilly. You need to be careful and calculating and... Make sure if that risk was worth it. Mm -hmm. So that's that. Okay, then we have Vine Lash, another pretty straightforward event card. Each enemy unit that is adjacent to one or more vine walls you control receives one wound marker. So this is a nice way of just automatically placing a wound on someone without having to roll a die to see whether it worked. So um, 
one of my favorite things to do with this is to use spore carriers first. Um, let's say, let's pretend, okay, go over here. Mm -hmm. Let's pretend, let's ignore these. Uh, let's say Prong was on the enemy, uh, was on, uh, was fighting these two guys. Um, let's pretend they're enemies. Uh, in this instance, you use spore carriers. So Prong is gone. The wall is there. Now you have, I believe it's two copies of Vine Lash. You could use, um, so now you thought, oh, well, I killed Prong. So that was kind of useless. Now I don't have anybody to fight these two guys. But what you can actually do is, if you have the two Vine Lash cards in your hand, now you can damage both of these guys for exactly two damage each, because each Vine Lash card deals one damage. So it's like the vines on the wall reached out and hit them. Yep, basically. So these vines are a lot more dangerous compared to the vines in Muglug's uh, uh, army. Okay, then we have Vine Bind. Until the beginning of your next turn, enemy units adjacent to one or more vine walls cannot move. So this one's pretty simple. It's as if they were bound to the wall, to the vine wall, and they won't be able to move until your turn starts again. So that would stop your enemy, um, your enemy's units from advancing towards you or, you know, moving in any way as long as they were adjacent to a vine wall when you played this card. So let's say, let's go back to this example again over okay. here. In this example here, you see, um, so like you, uh, if you use spore carriers and then you use vine lash and then you did one damage to each guy because you only had one vine lash. Now you could also combo that and use vine bind. And now these two champions are stuck where they are. They cannot move until their next turn. Mm -hmm. So um, these three cards, uh, the last three event cards that we've spoken about, they're really good at um, making interesting combinations together. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that was that. All right. And, and yeah. then is there, I think there's one more. Oh, that's the last event card. Okay. So yeah, and um, one other tip I have for people playing with Glitter Blub um, are, is this right here, last thing. So let's say there's this vine wall right here and Glitter Blub's right here. Just because there's a vine wall here, you might think that you're protected from enemy attacks. And that is true, but Let's say you had, um, let's just pretend here. So we got this swamp right here. Let's just pretend it's an enemy unit. That is not, this is melee, obviously. Mm -hmm. Let's pretend it was ranged. So if the swamp rat climbs onto this vine wall and is a ranged fighter, then it could attack Glurblub. Obviously, uh, for some of you, that's just obvious. Like um, when you're on a wall, um, the wall is no longer in your way. You can shoot at the person on the other side of the wall if you're a ranged unit. And if you remember how vine walls work, people can go on them. It's just that they usually have to roll to move off and they might take damage and get stuck when they're trying to move off. So this has been important for us in the games that we've played with the Swamp Mercenaries. It's easy to forget when you're playing against or no, when you're when you are the Swamp Mercenaries. It's easy to forget that the person playing against you can go on your wall and attack you. So sometimes we've thought that our summoner was safe because they were behind a vine wall, and then our summoner was killed because the other person remembered that they could go on the vine wall and attack us. So it's definitely important to keep in mind the vine wall doesn't protect you as much as a regular wall. And obviously, um, on any turn that you use vine bind, um, uh, you can be pretty sure what the enemy units are going to do next turn. They're probably just going to wail on your wall and destroy it so that way it's not in their way anymore for the next turn when they move because if they have nothing else to attack, they might as well attack your vine wall. Yeah, and they only take two hits to destroy, so that's something else to keep in mind. So yeah, that was that. All right, thanks so much for watching, and remember, if you enjoyed this video, you can subscribe to our channel and see more of what we're putting out about the Summoner Wars factions and about um, several other games as well, and we'll be continuing to update that on a regular basis. So yeah, stay tuned, guys, and thanks for watching. All right, thanks. See you in our next video. Okay, bye. bye.